welcome back to the live Zoom event uh, for the School of Racism. Really excited to be here. Now let's get any slides up. Okay, so as I said, the first conversation that we're going to be having today is on um, <clears throat> is on escaping the Saturn Moon Matrix. How to escape the Matrix construct and spiritually said. This is a picture of Saturn, as you can see in the background, and um, this is pretty uh, a pretty interesting logo that we've created, or uh, you know, a banner. And um, this is a lot more accurate than you would think in terms of the presentation and how this looks. So it is it is really um, a holographic projection that's coming from this uh, you know planetary celestial body, which is known as the Saturn Moon Matrix, and we do have to be aware that Saturn is responsible for almost every single corrupted file within the system that we operate in. And so looking inside of this matrix reality and examining uh, who we are and, and how we got here and how we find ourselves in this position within this matrix, um, really, you know, you start to ask yourself a lot of questions. You start to ask yourself, well, why is nobody waking up? Why are very few people really awakening to the truths of this reality? And for those that are awakening, why does it feel like a half awakening? Why does it feel like it's not really the truth that's being presented or explained in this reality? What is really happening here? Um, is there some sort of ulterior force or, you know, oppositional force working against humanity and against the consciousness of our reality to fight this awakening process, to stop this awakening process, to limit our consciousness. You really have to go all the way deep down the rabbit hole to understand the complexity that we are in, the complexity of the situation. And all roads point to the same direction once you truly awaken and understand the matrix reality and how this whole holographic projection is being orchestrated and, and broadcasted into your conscious mind and your subconscious mind, as well as the entire uh, system of So it's something that you need to really introspect on, but then also understand and understand where is the signals coming from? Okay, without the Saturn moon matrix, the earth realm would be in complete harmony. The earth realm would be in complete balance and, and in, in, in the law of vibration. So if you're asking yourself, well, is if everything is love and, and the creator or the true divine force is love, why do we not see that mirroring back onto the reality? Why do we see so much war and poverty and fear and corruption taking over the planet? Now, one of the problems is that in the spiritual community, a lot of the so-called spiritual people will simply deny this. They will not have the, the courage to look into the darkness, to look into the, the opposition, to look at the forces of control and confront them head on. So instead, they just focus on trying to build a love and light reality around their projection and never actually weeding out neural codes within their reality creation. So this is such an important topic because we have to understand truly it's kind of like, um, you know, if you are sick and you just keep telling yourself, oh, I'm okay, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, and you never get rid of your sickness or your infection or your disease, you never fix the, the, the underlying root causes for your sickness. Let's say maybe you have like, uh, you know, like a sugar problem or something, or hypothyroidism or something like that. And you you always are just trying to make yourself feel better. So you you drink the smoothies, you drink the foods, you eat the foods that are, are better, but you never take care of the underlying issue, which is your sickness. You never figure out what the underlying issue is. That always stays in the dark. That's exactly how, you know, our medical industry works. That's exactly how our culture works and our entire society, in fact, they are too afraid to look at the real problem in the reality and to really analyze why is this happening? What is causing the problems in our reality? What is causing lower frequencies and energies in our reality? And how can we break through 
these lower frequencies and dimensions and ascend, truly ascend. To truly ascend means to break through all matrix constructs and programming. And to truly ascend, you must come face to face with this being. This is the gatekeeper. This is the guardian. This is the guardian around your consciousness, the guardian around the matrix construct. You want to escape the matrix? You cannot escape the matrix without confronting this being first, without confronting this energy signature. So this is something that we need to vitally understand, is that without the confrontation of the Saturn moon matrix and understanding and breaking free, you cannot escape. So a lot of people talk about the fifth dimension. They talk about ascension. They talk about spiritual uh, gnosis. But they never once mention the Saturn moon matrix. They never once mention the true control systems. And that tells me they're not looking to control a uh, uh, break out of the control. They're looking to escape from the control systems. And you cannot have a world of peace and love without first taking out the demons, taking out the negative forces, because then negative forces will keep rallying, keep building, keep coming up until someone deals with them, until we deal with them, until we clear them out, until we revitalize our frequency and move past the uh, the demonic and the, the, the satanic and the lower vibrational frequencies and energies that have infiltrated this entire matrix reality. So we need to be very, very honest with ourselves. There is too much falsehood and uh, a lack of honesty within the spiritual communities that I see for a very, very, very large percentage of, of what's being taught out there. Um, people are not acknowledging the demiurge presence. They're not acknowledging the control systems. And this is a serious problem. This is how you get stuck in the love and light paradigm. This is how you get stuck in the new age paradigm. Um, and you do not ascend. You do not ascend when you don't confront the darkness. You stay stagnant. You stay unconscious. So we need to become conscious of the real control systems that are operating in this matrix reality. Now, a couple of quick things about the time. We're going to be going for about two hours or so. and maybe less, maybe longer. It depends. We have quite a few slides to go through. So... I'm going to keep it short and concise, um, but at the same time, not short and concise. So remember, this PowerPoint will be available at the end of the conversation and everything will be recorded. OK, so as I was talking about Saturn, the Lord, the Lord of the Rings. Now, the Lord of the Rings is a very popular book series and, uh, you know, movie series that has come out. And what is this whole concept of the Lord of the Rings? What does the Lord of the Rings mean? And why does Saturn have rings? Why do all of the other celestial bodies, planets, have no rings? And then this, this one planet that we are supposedly told about is containing a ring. So what's really happening here? What is, what is really operating this ring? And what, is, what do these rings mean? Now, we have to look at this and understand a ring signifies control. A ring signifies a crown. OK, so anytime you, you, you place a crown on a king, that's a ring that's going around their consciousness. And that's signifying that they are in charge. They are the power. So there was, in fact, in the ancient uh, you know, times, Saturn did not contain this ring. Saturn did not have rings attached to it. Saturn was vacant of any rings. And this was the time of the golden age, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit. This time of the golden age when humanity, in fact, this, this planet toyed or celestial sphere was the dominant sun. So the sun that we have now, which is Sol or Helios, not the sun. Saturn was our sun. And, and the Saturn sun was symbolized as a circle with a dot in the center, and that represented the sun, okay? So this was the ancient sun. In this ancient time, the sun was a purplish, bluish dawn color. So we basically had a perpetual twilight, which is where the whole concept of the twilight zone came from. We are living in the twilight zone. So what exactly happened to make Saturn the Lord of the Rings? Well, this is 
there's so much ancient history here. There's so much gnosis here. And all of these mythologies and stories all tell us the truth about what's really happening. They all metaphorically and energetically tell us and explain the exact situation that we are in. So at, at some point, basically, the sun shifted from Saturn to Helios. And as the shift occurred, Saturn was bestowed its rings. And the rings of Saturn became known and became applied. And these rings formed as crystals. So different scientists and different, uh, you know, different people that study astrology and astrologists theorize. Now, the official NASA scientists will tell you that these are made out of ice. Well, it is my understanding from energetics and metaphysics that this is probably made out of some sort of crystalline structure. Not to mention that we are in a holographic reality, a hologram, meaning that everything is made out of energetic frequencies. Therefore, Saturn, being the Lord of the Rings, is being composed of a higher vibratory light structure, a higher vibratory light energy field around this planetoid, which is creating a broadcasting signal, okay? A broadcasting signal, which is then being translated and transmuted to the consciousness of our planet, our planetoid, Earth, Gaia, Sophia, Sophia. This Saturnian energy has created a wormhole portal. So I want to make it clear that Saturn was not evil uh, initially, was not corrupted initially, and then there was the corruption that came and took place. We don't know exactly how the corruption took place, but we will get into some of the the, the uh, um, theology or the theos, uh, you know theo uh, uh, philosophical understanding of what really happened. And we will talk about who and what Saturn is and what the Lord of the Rings really means. So let's keep going. Now we're gonna talk about the Sky Father, okay? The Sky Father is in fact Saturn. So there's a few things that I want to really make you aware of is that this is the Sky. The Sky Father is Kronos. So in Greek mythology, in Roman mythology and all of the creation, uh, creationary mythos, but especially Greek mythology, you have Kronos, which is the god of space and time, the third dimensional reality. And the god of space and time operates as the creator of this materialistic plane. And as the creator of the materialistic plane, the first thing that happened was when Kronos was birthed by some of the... Uh, older gods, I believe it was Uranus and, and whatnot, but he had, he had basically come out of, of chaos. This god had come out of chaos. And then he had given birth to lesser gods. And these lesser gods were Jupiter, okay, also known as Zeus, Neptune, also known as Poseidon, Eris, the god of war, also known as Mars, okay, Venus, also known as Aphrodite, the goddess of love, Mercury, the god of messaging, uh, or, or messengers, or, you know, transportation and communication, um, and as well as many others, Athena, the goddess of wisdom. And so from this creation, from this, this supreme deity, as he would call himself, Kronos, or Enlil, or Saturn, he immediately recognizing the power of his children, tried to devour his children. This is in the stories of all Greek mythos, is that when Kronos was first creating, uh, created, and he first created his children, which was Zeus and Poseidon and Ares and Athena, he immediately tried to devour Zeus because he recognized the power that Zeus had. Now, Zeus is Enki. Zeus is Jupiter. And so when recognizing the power that this being had and these other beings had, he immediately tries to devour him and destroy him. And instead, what happens is that Zeus teams up with Poseidon, which is Neptune. Okay, so Jupiter and Neptune teaming up, as well as the other gods teaming up together to lock away the Saturnian god, 
to lock away Kronos and to seal him away into his own reality and, and to basically protect mankind or protect the whole situation from this tyrannical force. So Cronus essentially gave birth to these gods and created these gods and then essentially saw them as a food source, as a fuel source. So the first thing that he does after giving birth is devour them or attempt to devour them. Yet he fails because he is overthrown by Jupiter and by uh, various other lesser gods, quote unquote. So this is the story of various deities. This could also be considered the story of the Anunnaki, but we will get into that in the future because it's a little bit more complex than that. And it's not as simple as you may think it, it sounds, okay? So as Kronos was locked away into this third dimensional reality, he was locked away into his own dimension and, and he wanted to aff afflict his lower frequency and his terror and his wrath on all of creation. And as his, as his prime directive or his prime goal to cause this destruction and to cause this devastation towards other people, he found that he was not able to do much himself, but to send his minions and his arbitrars or his messengers or his archons, okay? Or his, his beings that he would use in terms of, of, of his spells, of his inversion. So from him being locked away, he's not able to do much. So we're talking about Saturn here. We're talking about Enlil. We're talking about Kronos. We're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about Yaldabaoth. And we're talking about this supreme narcissistic deity. This is the epitome of narcissism and egocentrism and ego. And so we're going to talk about the Gnostic uh, creation mythos and exactly how this being came into creation and the true story of the entire understanding of our cosmic history. So this is information that you're not going to find in your school systems or in your mainstream narratives. This is information that you're going to have to dig for uh, and really my entire life and to really understand. And I've had many, many, many confrontations and understandings with this entity and his, his minions. And as you really do ascend, as you really do ascend, you do come face to face with Saturn, the Lord of the Rings. You do come face to face with the Demiurge or Yaldabaoth. You do understand what this bastard of a creator is doing and what he has done and how he's created the matrix and what the matrix's real purpose is. So let's talk about the Sky Father. Now, I use the words, quote, Sky Father, because that's what he likes to uh, refer to himself as. The Abrahamic Sky Father is indeed the Demiurge, a being who requires total submission spiritually, energetically, and within your own mind and soul. And so <clears throat> we're going to talk about how this being is, in fact, an alien. He's an alien to our, our realm and he is the Lord of the Archons. This is Biblo uh, Apocalypse, um, another website that I ha uh, have referenced here, which is a great uh, reference. But this is actually being taken from John, uh, John Lynn Lash's book, not in his image, which I have uh, right next to me, sitting a little bit over there. So I'll go grab that in a minute or so. But basically, you have to understand that the Sky Father is the, the lord of evil. He is the conqueror of realms, and he did come to this realm to conquer and to cause fear and, uh, and, and suffering. And so he's known as the great unmentionable evil at the center of our culture in monotheism. From a barbaric Bronze Age text known as the Old Testament, three anti-human religions have evolved, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. These are sky god religions. They are literally patriarchal. God is the omnipotent father. Hence the loathing of women for 2,000 years in those countries afflicted by the sky god and his earthly male delegates. The sky god is a jealous god, of course. He requires total obedience from everyone on earth. And he is not just in place for one tribe, but for all of creation. Those who would reject him must be converted or killed for their own good. Ultimately, 
Totalitarianism is the only sort of politics that can truly serve the sky god's purpose. Any movement of a liberal nature endangers his authority and those of his delegates on earth. One god, one king, one pope, one master.